I only have one personal PC. This Asus Zephyrus G14 2020 edition. Ever since I started this YouTube channel, this poor thing has been forced to be flashed to a new distribution every several weeks. And since then, I haven't been able to use it to play any games properly, because setting the game up usually takes me a long time. And by the time I finish, I will have to hop onto a new distribution for the next video. But things started to change after I finished my last video. I think I have finally figured out how to play games on this laptop without having to worry about the setup when I hop onto a new distribution. Let's see if it works. If you have been watching my video for some time, you will have probably noticed that I always do the full wipe on the NVMe when installing the new distribution. Which means I have to find an efficient way of backing up my files and restoring them. In this video, I talk about three tools that help me to do the distro hopping efficiently. One of which is the Synology drive. It uses rsync behind the scenes to sync all my files across the distributions. It works pretty well for my personal files, which are less than 2 gigabytes in total. But issue with games is that one game is usually 10 times the size compared to my personal files. I have to wait 30 minutes already for my personal files to restore every time. I can't imagine how long it would take for several games to be synced which is literally the main reason for me to stop gaming. However, after finding the way to run cracked game in this video and successfully playing them for several hours, I realized without any game launchers, these games are way easier to play than their legal versions. All I need are bottles and flat seal. Then I had an epiphany. Is it possible to run those games on an external drive? I knew games can run properly on PS4 and Xbox One with SSD enclosures, and I happened to have one lying around for such occasion. After 10 minutes of hunting through my junk box, I found it still has a 2TB SSD inside collecting dust. On top of that, I also found another 1TB drive which I totally forgot I had. I bet they're from my old desktop PC I sold in 2019. Jeez, what a spoiled kid I am. I checked the product page on Amazon for my SSD enclosure and saw even though it is a USB 3.0 generation, which has the speed up to 5 gigabytes per second, people still can play games from it, so I decided to give it a try. I formatted a 2 terabyte drive with ext4 and copied the game folders directly to it, and boom, it worked. Not only are the games running properly, they even have the saves I made when playing on my internal NVMe. What a revolutionary discovery. Now, no matter which distribution I hop over, all I need to do is to set up bottles and flat seal with flat pack, and then I can enjoy all the games I have played earlier without losing any progress, which is not a totally correct assumption yet. Now, the bottleneck comes to flat pack and bottle setup process. In order to play cracked games, I also need to set up FlatSeal, .NET Framework, and VC Redist, which will always take some time. Is there any way to set it up once and be done with it? Another lightning hit me. I have two spare SSDs. Why don't I install a Linux distribution on another one and run the games using the system there? This way, no matter which system I'm running natively on my gaming laptop, I will always have a gaming environment to play. So I went on the internet and found this, a 2 bay SSD enclosure with a USB 3.1 Gen 2 up to 10 gigabytes per second speed. I plugged those drives in and I started my journey. For the external distribution, I want something stable because I don't plan to change it a lot. You should have flat pack support natively and something I love so I can use for a long time. I went with Linux Mint. The installation is straightforward. Insert Ventura and the SSD enclosure together. Go into the Mint Live CD and start the installation program. Choose the correct disk and wipe the whole thing during the installation process. I was able to boot into the Mint system after that. But the issue is that the Mint system bootloader is located on my host disk. Because when I unplug the SSD, the grub will throw an error saying it can't find the boot up device. 
I searched the internet and found most people are saying it is best to disable the internal drive before installing Linux on an external one. But my ASUS does not allow me to do that. I ended up finding the post on 58biz.com, which has the steps on how to install Grub onto the external ESP partition. I gave the article a browse and realized the way I was installing Mint already made the ESP partitioning on my external drive. It is only missing the Grub2 installation. So I put it back to the live CD and followed the tutorial there. Problem solved. I can boot Mint using the external boot up option. The issue after that was Fedora won't boot without me specifying the internal NVMe. I wasn't too worried about that because I was planning to install elementary OS on my native drive anyway for my next video. And also, this tutorial went on talking about the fix for booting Windows after that, which is not relevant to me anymore. Next, I install elementary OS on my main drive, and boom, I can see the new Grub menu installed by elementary, which also has the Mint option. After NVIDIA, Flatpak, and Bottles are set up properly, let's play games. Several things happened. First, I tried the three games I was able to play on my previous Silver Blue installation. Spider-Man and Sekiro work fine, but Red Dead Redemption 2 did not start. I thought it might do to that the two drives are fighting over a single port, so I separate them into two enclosures, but still not working. I moved the drive back into one enclosure and copied the game onto the Mint system drive, and the speed looked fine to me, but it didn't fix the issue. I also used two hours to reinstall the game, but still no luck. Finally, I set up the bottles on my internal NVMe in elementary OS, reading off from this enclosure and the game started properly. So it is probably a Linux Mint issue. I also checked with NVIDIA driver version 515 on Mint, which is the same version on elementary OS with no luck. Get that fire lit, quick! Can't believe we lost Davey too! The next issue I found is related to the game saves. When I moved the game files from internal drive to external one on Fedora, the saves were preserved, but I didn't realize it was because they were stored on the Windows C drive under users folder. They were intact because I was using the same bottle environment. Now they're all gone when I switch to Mint with a brand new bottle. You can see I have to restart Spider-Man game from beginning again. I lost almost 10 hours of gameplays. Definitely learned this one the hard way. This is because I haven't been using Windows for so long that I totally forgot about this. So don't be like me. Make sure you back up your bottle properly each time. Next, when gaming on the external USB, sometimes the game will pause a bit when the content is being loaded from the external port. I noticed this happening to me for the Spider-Man game, not the Sekiro, on both single bay and two bay enclosures. It happens every 1-2 to two hours, so it doesn't really matter to me. But if the immersiveness of the gameplay is important to you, definitely take it into consideration. So if you excuse me, I'll go play some games now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.